I am standing in the remnants of a prehistoric structure basin. And what that means is they would have dug their houses uh, semi-subterranean down into the ground slightly. So you can see here a line, hopefully, cornering here and straightening out here, separating this lighter, sterile subsoil that's undisturbed versus this dark soil that has uh, bits of charcoal and burned clay and artifacts. So this is the type of anomaly that um, we saw across the area where we did magnetometry, several structures. We were targeting this specific structure because of its size and shape. Um, we hypothesized that it may be a later Mississippian structure. We wanted to get an idea of what type of prehistoric disturbances and archaeological features were in this particular tract of land because they are adjacent to these two borrow pits and we are so close to downtown Cahokia. So then the first step in doing that was to set out our grid, which was an arbitrary grid, 30 by 30 meters squares, which then uh, wearing the machine that has two sensors, it looks like a football goalpost. Um, <laughs> the settings that we use, we have it take readings eight per second, and I walk at about a meter per second pace on one meter transects throughout this 30 by 30 meter grid. And then there's a, a certain software that we use to then process that data to get it off of the machine. And that will show us in sort of a grayscale is what we use normally. Being a really positive anomaly is shows up as a dark black or gray. A negative anomaly uh, shows up as lighter gray or white. And those both tell us about that that particular area of soil had been disturbed prehistorically or had been altered by thermal alteration. So something had been heated or burned there. So you're basically looking for places where people pooped or put things on fire. And yes, um, not necessarily poop. So any sort of organics just right. from trash, from food, from disturbing the soil, anything like that would change the magnetism. You actually can get them from your local hardware shop. Um, so you get the steel blade shovels, and they have a, you know, they come like a, in a point. And you, you know, either buy or rent um, an angle grinder, and you cut the pointed part off. So you create this uh, nice, flat, even surface, and then you sharpen them on a bench grinder so that they are sharp um, on the back side. So we have a technique called shovel scraping where you basically bend over and uh, use your lower body to uh, scrape the soil really nice and flat. And so this sharp end gives us, it slices through this really tough clay and it leaves it in a nice flat surface. Trowel is the same thing and it's also, you know, wooden handle which I prefer and you sharpen it on both sides so it's nice and sharp and you can cut string with it and you get nice profile cuts with it and yet, you know, it's kind of a mark of a good archaeologist, they have a nice sharp trowel. Um, so it's a fun thing to teach students about when they don't have one. <laughs>